Okay, now this is the Epson Workforce 840. I went in our warehouse and I pulled it out. It had no cartridges in it. So I've set up this little arrangement where I'm slowly trying to flush out that printhead because it was clogged. It wouldn't print anything. All I kept getting was blank light after I installed the continuous sync system. Now I've got a fair chance that I can get this working. But I thought I should show this. Um, normally it would be sitting out in the warehouse with our uh, ink cartridges in it and that would help. But we must have pulled it out. Now I'm going to show you what I have here. Our Executive 2 with the isobaric chambers, backflow dampers with the new heat sensor. What that does is it regulates the pressure by the amount of temperature in the room. When it's hot, it raises. When it's cold, it drops. It keeps a better pressure. I've got all the plugs plugged off and point this out. When you're running, you should always have these out. Now, sometimes they're hard to put in. Just get a little bit of uh, dish soap. Put it on there. It'll go right on in. Now I close them all off. This is the CIS system. With every one of our systems, you get a little syringe with a tip like this. You also get one of these syringes with a little piece of hose so you can go over the needle and slowly clean it out or add ink. Sometimes you just have to add ink. I'm slowly pushing down on these. Take your time. This sat almost overnight like this. I made up a special head cleaner for Epson because I knew this was going to take some time. Okay, now this has been sitting overnight like this and I just keep adding that cleaner a little bit and it's going easier. That means that printheads getting flushed out. This has been sitting for quite some time in our warehouse without cartridges. Now, we're going to show you how to prime up CIS system when that's been sitting a long time. You get some air in the lines, a little bit of air, no problem. But when you get a lot of air, then you've got to prime it up. I have a, in our continuous sync system, Executive 2, we give you uh, one of these syringes and then the purge syringe. I'm going to show you how that works. In our cartridge, we have what they call a poppet valve. What it does is when you take it out, it shuts off the exit port so it can't leak. Otherwise, you'd have ink all over. Now, I closed off all the ink plugs, every one of them. Closed them off. Now, I'm going to show you how to purge the cartridge. I'm going to remove just the yellow, the big one. Then, I go in the bottom, right in the bottom. And then, I'm going to pull up and draw some ink up. Okay, now let me push it in. You can do it this way or this way. I usually do it like this. And then I pull up, and you can see I'm filling it. And I've got a little extra ink in there. I can take it out. That's how you purge them. You do them all exactly the same way. Put the plug back in and go to the next one, the next one, and the next one. That's how simple it is to purge these. Okay, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take these syringes out. You might want to have a paper towel handy. I just take it out. Now because they were all clogged, I used for the little syringes, but normally you only need one. Now after I get them all out, you can 
clean out one of the syringes and this what you do you put the tip of that in that syringe and you transfer the ink I didn't wash mine out too good but I'm just doing this to show you then when you go over the you're going to go over the tip in the yellow you're going to add that ink back in to the printhead so when we put everything back together it'll prime up I'm going to go over the yellow and just squirt a little bit going in pretty easy I'm going to do that for all the colors I did yellow I'm going to do the magenta cyan and then the black and then we'll put everything together and we'll see what happens now because this was left without any cartridges for six seven eight months I don't really know how long uh, this test printer it was left with pigment and ink in the printhead that's the hardest one to get out if you have dye base it's not as bad okay now I, some of them have a, a lid switch so I used a little piece of paper to jump it the thing still it is down. Install the continuous ink system cartridges, put them in the bracket, make sure the little air plugs were open in the isobaric chambers. Now we'll turn it on. Epsilon will come up. We recognize the chips. Sounds like it's going into a clean. When it's done, I'm going to do a setup and I'm going to print out a nozzle check. Now, you should never let an Epson printer sit that long, especially with no cartridges in it. So, now we're going to go to setup. We're going to go to maintenance. We're going to do a head cleaning. And then we're going to do a nozzle check. Okay, now I went back to the maintenance. It says nozzle check, head cleaning. Okay, now what I'm going to do is do a nozzle check. Okay. Now, I've been working on this for about almost a whole day just to get this thing back up and working. Now, let's see. Oh, not too bad. Not too bad. Got a couple missing. That could be mostly air. A lot of times people think that means it's clogged. It's not. It's actually air that's in there. So now I'm going to go do another print head cleaning no more than three and then I'll run some um, high quality prints to see if that'll help clear out the air okay now we're back to the main screen now I'm going to go to the computer and show you how you should always run your Epson you should always run it like this because then that print head will always remain charged We'll go over to the computer and I'll show you how to set it. Okay, now I'm going to print out this little test sheet here. I'll go up to File, Print, and I'll go here and pick out the printer. We have a lot of printers. So I've got to find that Epson 840. Go to Properties, and I'm going to t pick Text and Image. Some say quality, but that's where you want to always set it. Never use text, never use draft at all. Now, you can use photo if you want, if you're doing photo or best photo. Here's my ink levels. Say OK. That's the way you always want to do it. I'll set it for three. Say OK. And now we'll go over to the printer. and see how it's going to print out. Now here comes the first one.
And remember, we had a little, a little missing parts, but overall, it's printing out pretty good. And it'll only get better the more you print. I hope this video will help you fix your Epson when it has a problem. It's really going to do a lot of good for the Epson printheads. So you'll be able to purchase this kit or make up your own and buy the chemicals.